Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, we're here to help our PM Marketing Network Lead customers build their businesses and make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people important to you. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Now on to our show with your host, Peter Mingles. Hello, everyone. Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us live on Building Fortunes Radio at www.buildingfortunesradio.com. It's a Thursday. It's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. A great way to really start to wrap up your week days and then start to work on your week end because it's one continuous blur if you're building a business you're building your business it's a lifestyle there's no such thing as this days off if you do it the right way every day is a vacation in a certain form or fashion so when i was speaking with janine avala uh just recently she said i want to come back on the radio we were doing such a cool thing with the mlmia and i just loved um working with janine so when she says, I want to come back, I want to do radio shows, I said, I will teach you. Now, I won't hold you back because you're certainly able to do stuff on your own. But it would be really great if we kind of walked you through how to do some cool stuff. And we helped a lot of other people on Building Fortunes Radio as well. So she's got her own website. She'll tell you that as well. But if you go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine, that's J-A-N-I-N-E because spelling counts. So it's buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine to be able to hear this as well as the previous radio shows that we've had. And it is with a lot of fun and delight that I introduce to our Building Fortunes radio listening audience, Janine Avila. So Janine, thanks for being here. Well, you're very welcome and good evening, everyone. It is Thursday evening and I love doing this show. It's really the highlight of my week because I'm absolutely passionate about home business and BYOB, which for me means be your own boss, and being able to control your life and the circumstances of your life and setting yourself up for success. Because over my career, and I'm sure you have too, Peter, I've seen a lot of people who ventured into the home business arena with hopes and dreams and plans. And unfortunately, they don't really have a blueprint for success for how to work from home. Because I don't know about where you went to school, but they didn't teach us that where I went to school. And it's an art. And it's not just about prospecting and generating business and the hustle. It's about some of the things we talked about in our very first shows, which were how you set up your home office for success, creating a separate space so that you can actually be very successful at home and and draw a line between when you're working and when you're relaxing at home. I never wanted to see people set up their home business and their home office, and they just take over their home. And that's not good for the family, and that's not good for relationships, and that's not good for you. So part of what we did in the very first shows, and and Peter told you, you can go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine, and all of our shows are there, and they're in the order. It's a recipe. You know, when when you're following a recipe, it's like first you do this, and then you do this. So part of what I wanted to put together was a solid blueprint, like you actually just follow it, you'll be successful. But the foundation is how you set up the office, and we've covered all that. And if you missed that, you can go back and listen to any of the podcasts of the earlier shows. They're only 30 minutes, so you can listen to them on a drive or actually while you're setting up the office. And I'm happy to say that I've had some amazing email and uh, text messages, phone calls, I've had great feedback from people who said, you know, I was listening to your show and I started thinking, she's right. I need a separate office or I need to get rid of the clutter and I need to get organized. And I, it's very rewarding to me because I know how it feels when you take that next step. Part of what you want your home business to be is not just profitable, which is very important, but peaceful and a place where you can work and you can really control your environment. And the the last thing I want to say before I launch into the topic of today's show is that I'm just on a kick for freedom and freedom, financial freedom is great, mental freedom and the freedom to be flexible and live your life on your own terms. You never, if you are really free and you're working from home, you're not worried about finances. You have a system and you learn how to generate them, but also you can be your own boss so that you don't have to go put in a request and ask somebody 
if you could have a day off, you don't have to put in a request and ask somebody if you can go visit somebody in the hospital or go to a funeral or a graduation. I mean, it's graduation time. And, you know, I remember a time when I had a boss and I was unable to attend my oldest granddaughter's graduation. They just said no. And I, I was appalled. And I remember I put a plan in place. I thought, I got to get free. This is ridiculous. My family's the most important thing to me. The graduation ceremony was in the evening, but there was a work function that they wanted me to go to. And sometimes things happen in our lives that are triggers. And that was a trigger for me. So you'll hear me often talk about not being able to go to a graduation. And, you know, honestly, to me, that was very important. And it was a milestone because I never wanted to have to do that again because I had to call my granddaughter and tell her I wasn't going to be there. And um, it's just the success of your own business and your own, the flexibility that you can have in your own life. It's, it's the only way to live. We see all this, my best life. I'm living my best life. The way you can really live your best life is to control your own life, set up a business that's profitable, that generates income, doing something you love. Either you're promoting a product that you really believe in and you love, or you're using your skills and creating a service and just generating something that's of value so you feel good about it. And then you feel good when you're promoting it and you're using all your skills, all your talent, all your energy, all your brain power for your own business and your own family and to create the life you want. So that's the preamble, if you will, for this. So tonight, you know, we've talked about how to generate more business. And so tonight's topic is really the name of the game. You can have the most perfect setup, the best home office, the most organized bookkeeping system. You can have a great filing system and no clutter and great motivational pictures all around your office and beautiful office furniture. You can have all of that. But if you don't have business, you're not going to be peaceful because the name of the game is business, profit. And you need clients, you need customers, you need business. Um, so how do you do that? When you're working from home and you're creating your own business, um, I think I mentioned this in one of our other shows. In the book, it, you know, it's a book from about 20 years ago, but the principles are timeless in search of excellence and it's written by Tom Peters and he talks about being able to go out and create your own market. And that really resonated with me and I never forgot it because it just talked about rather than sitting in a building and waiting for people to come to you, hopefully they see your sign or they see your advertising and a lot of people spend a lot of money on advertising um, and they see your sign and they, you're waiting behind the counter. You know, it's kind of a passive way to do business. You're waiting back there. You're hoping someone will come in and you've got your merchandise and you've got everything set up. But when you have your own home business, whether you're doing direct sales, network marketing, you're working your real estate business from home, you're a real estate broker, uh, credit restore, you've got a, an IT support business, you're an image coach, uh, you're an interior designer, you're an event planner. There are so many things you can do from home. And when you set it up and you just find your passion and go for it. So we've talked on some of the other shows about social media. We did a show where we talked about low cost, no cost advertising, uh, using Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, Twitter. We've talked about Google ads and we've, there's, there's Shopify, there's Poshmark. There's so many things. You can spend a lot of time learning about these things and you should, because in order to be competitive, in today's marketplace, you absolutely are going to get left behind if you don't really understand and know how to use social media. So I've talked to some uh, income earners in network marketing and direct sales that are making upwards of sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month, and they're only using social media. But that doesn't happen because they just guess at how to use it and jump on Facebook and do some Facebook lives. That comes from a lot of study and strategy on how to do it. But we're not talking about any of that today. All those things work. And on the other podcasts, you can hear shows about that. Tonight, what I wanted to talk to you about is promoting, prospecting, and just generating new business and how you get out in the community and reaching out to people and letting them know you're in business. That's where the word promotion comes in. 
So that takes a little bit of effort. And so what I'm going to talk to you about is just an active list that you keep. And this is your contact list. This is going to be new for some people. But let's say, and, you know, it's, it's a very fundamental piece of a direct selling or a network marketing business. But this is also, and it works well, a fundamental piece of for a real estate broker, a lot of times they refer to it as farming or, you know, people have to make their calls. You have to let people know you're in business. Why do you need a contact list? Because it increases sales. It's that simple. It's the bottom line. It's to increase sales, generate business, and let people know you're in business. So I'm going to go over a couple of key fundamentals that will really help you so that when you've got it all set up and you have everything together, you know what to do when you sit down at that fabulous desk. You know, you're going to make a, a few lists, and I'm going to break them down in a few minutes, but I'm going to take a, breathe, a breather here, Peter, and see if you wanted to interject anything. I do. Um, we're going to take a little commercial break in a second, but you mentioned BYOB, and on this radio show, I had to put myself on mute because I did a BYOT which was bring your own tuba. My daughter is practicing the tuba <laughs> in the background. And I wasn't sure if you guys would be able to hear it. <laughs> so I muted myself out. So she's <laughs> I didn't hear a tuba. I did because I muted myself out. I'll I'll see if I'll I'll keep my mic open. But um okay. but that, that's the cool thing is that that's the cool kind of background noises you're supposed to hear when you're running a home based business. So we'll be right back. Thanks for that's listening right. to Building Fortunes Radio. If you sell a product or service, then you should check out PMMarketingNetworkLeads.com. Just visit www.NetworkLeads.com. For over 18 years, PM Marketing has helped distributors build their home-based businesses through lead generation, website development, automated email delivery systems, and sales training. If you're looking for a way to increase your skills and increase the number of people that see your product or opportunity, NetworkLeads.com can help. To learn more, visit www.NetworkLeads.com. Ask about their lead management system, capture pages, personalized websites, MLM training, humongous blogs, the humongous classified ad network, Building Fortunes Radio, or their webinar schedule. Networkleads.com can be your one-stop shop for everything you need. And now, back to our show. And we are back. Peter Mingles here with Janine Avala. And if you go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine, you'll be able to hear this as well as the previous radio shows again. So, Janine, back to you. Okay. Um, I also, just as I was listening to the commercial, I just wanted to say that, you know, if you've been listening to this show and you have a direct sales or a network marketing business, you can go to that and it, it's at networkleads.com and, you know, maybe check it out. Find out about those landing pages and the things that they have there, the capture pages. You know, explore that, learn, ask questions. And that's how you actually build your business and you build your skill set because you're exploring things and you're starting to learn. Like how many of you know what is a capture page? How many of you know if you bought leads, did you even know you can do that? But you buy leads and then you, you ramp up your skill set and you're able to generate business. So that's one way that you can do it. So don't just listen to the commercials, but like really take action. And that's the name of the game is taking action. So I was talking about making a list. So, you know, you get your yellow pad or you do it on your computer, however works best for you. But you want to make a list. This is fundamental to establishing your business in the community. So, you know, first of all, businesses are built and maintained and are successful because of relationships and the way you treat people and people that know about your business. This is not something to take lightly. This is something that you want to let people know, like, let, who who do you know that would be in, uh, someone in the community that kind of knows everybody that you want to call them and say, hey, I just want to let you know I've started my business. Promote your business. Feel good about what you're doing. Spend a little time. Think about what you're going to say. And then you think about the people you want to call. And you're one, letting them know you're in business. You're, you don't have a downtown business. You have a home business. You don't have a sign or a shingle hanging out front. You don't have a flashing neon sign. I mean, maybe you do, but Peter probably does. But um, mostly what you have is your telephone, and you're going to call people. If I was moving into Peter Mingle's community, and I know that he has a radio show 
called Building Fortunes Radio, I might just, and I knew Peter, I'd call him and say, I want to let you know, you know, I, I've started my home business. These are my products. This is what I'm doing. I just want to make sure you knew I was in business. If you know anybody looking for X, Y, Z, please give them my business phone number. This is my website. Um, and you start to just generate interest and tell people about your business. Word of mouth marketing is very, very um, successful. And it's successful because people trust other people. But when it's time to build the business, it's time to go to work. So the, the notes, if you're taking any, is your contact list is fundamental to your success in business. Now, let's just break down the word contact. That means to communicate with someone, typically in order to give specific information. So when we call to talk about our business, you know, be polite, but don't spend a bunch of time talking about the weather and everything else. Let, when you call, when somebody calls me, I appreciate it if they cut to the chase and let me know because I'm busy. What's the reason for the call? And ask them two things. Let them know what your service is and ask them, do you know any, are you interested? Are you looking for, let them know what your service is or your product and then ask them to refer you. Ask them to go take a look at your web. You be intentional. Please go have a look at my website. You know, and we don't have to, this is my opinion. A lot of people teach this. I don't. We don't have to play games and say, I'm, all, I'm interested in your opinion. You know, please go take a look. If you really are, you want to be sincere, but don't try to trick them into go looking at your website. And just, you know, when sometimes somebody say, I want you to look at this business opportunity. I've always valued your opinion. And I can tell when they mean it, and I can tell when they just trying to get me to go look. So just be genuine. You know, we hear a lot of talk these days about transparency and authenticity and all these kind of things. And it's just, just be sincere and genuine and honest. It's, it's efficient and it's easier. But so you're going to contact people. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to network. If you're not good at networking or you hate networking, Unfortunately, that's a major part of the business. So you either have you have a decision to make. You either have to A, get really good at it, or B, get somebody to work with you that loves it. I personally love networking, but I happen to know there's a lot of people that don't. So for me, I love to go to like Chamber of Commerce events. You want to get your business cards with you, but more importantly, you go in there with a plan to collect business cards because you're looking for people to promote your business to. But you go in and you have a smile on your face and you listen more than you talk. People are going to be more interested in you if you're actually listening to what their business and their service are. How can I support you are things you say to people. What that does is that in turn helps them want to help you genuinely and say, well, what is your product? What do you do? And you start to build these relationships in the community. And if you haven't done that already, that should really be on your list of things to do. Go get plugged in to your community. And um, it sounds old school, but it isn't. There's a, a, every community has a community newspaper, just about every community. And you usually find them outside of coffee shops. And they're, if you pick that up and start going through it, you'll find all the local things that are going on. And you can, you know, a lot of um, cities and communities have these things online. But these, I love these little newspapers because I can sit there, highlight it, go through it. It's a work piece. And it's keeping me plugged into the community. So not only am I looking at this with eyes of like, what should I attend? What fairs are coming up where I can have a booth? Um, you know, trade shows are another way. We're going to do a specific show on how to promote your business in trade shows because I have a, a whole formula for that. But um, there is the little community fairs and art festivals and wine festivals and things like that. A lot of times they have, you know, the county fair. Don't underestimate the county fair. They've got their booths. People are coming through there. And that's a place for you to smile and meet people and talk to the other business owners. Um, when I was building my business in Tupperware in the early days, I never missed a county fair. I did it every single year. And people got to start to look for me. And I would always increase my business because it's just awareness and it's getting out there in the community. Um, so again, if you go to the website, there's leads groups, there's meetups, there's all these kinds of things, but no going in there, they're going to try to pitch you and sell you. So just, I want to say this 
uh, just keep your guard up so you don't end up just buying everything or paying for an expensive leads group. You don't need to do that. Uh, but what you do want to do is promote, be yourself, again, be authentic and promote your business and collect business cards. Talk to people, really listen to what they say, and then you come back with, you know, who's got the carpet cleaning business that works from home, who's the dentist, who's the florist, who's the event planner, who knows all the meeting rooms. All of these things are going to be hugely important for your business. So start, make it, you know, you can go to breakfast meetings. Um, sometimes those are much more efficient and they do them before they start the day. There's luncheons, there's socials, after hours. They're, they're a lot of fun once you really get the hang of it. And um, I can sit here and tell you story after story about I met one, I went to an event and I met one person that led me to another person. You know, I went to one in Long Beach, California once. I didn't even really like the group that much. And I was thinking, oh, I don't like, I shouldn't have been here. Everybody, it seemed kind of hypey to me and pitchy. And then after the event, one lady came up to me and asked me what I did. And I told her, and that led me to a whole string of speaking events, that one person. So that one effort to go down there for one hour and pay whatever I paid for the chicken lunch led me to a lot of business because there's always that one person you're going to meet. So if you haven't done that, that's a very important part of the plan. When you talk to people that are well plugged into the community or well established, ask them. You know, ask questions. Really listen to the answers. How do you promote your business? What events and groups around here do you recommend? And just really listen to what people will tell you, and you'll get some great ideas. And, um, you know, start with your list so you know who to contact. You know, a lot of times we understand the power of capitalizing our business with money, but we don't think about how important it is to capitalize our business with people and contacts. So how do you make a list? And this is a good active contact list. First of all, you think about it. I mean, you really sit down and think. It's not random. It's like, who do I know? Who do I know that has a strong circle of influence? Who do they know? Who do I like to do business with? Who seems, who's a mover and a shaker? Who seems to really know? And, and they're plugged into the, all the different events that are going on. And never prejudge anyone's interest in your business. Let them decide. Your only job is to promote. And that's it. Then don't be attached. But once you've done your job, it becomes a habit when you start to do it. You know, um, also, I just want to say this. There's a lot of people who are very central in the community, like the mail carrier, the dentist, the minister, the florist, you know, people who know a lot of people. And you think about who's, who sold me things? Who have I purchased from? Who did I buy my house from? Who do I get? Where do I get my car service? You know, where did I buy my television? Where do you go when you want to go camping? Is there a sports club? All these different things. You find out what they're interested in. You contact these people because you've already done business with them and you let them know you're in business so that they know that's reciprocal. You've already done business with them. You also build your list by just going through your cell phone and looking at the names you have in there. I personally still have a Rolodex. I'm sure Peter probably does too, I'll just say. And stacks of business cards. How many of you have stacks of business cards everywhere? Um, I have an app on my phone. It's called an Abbey Card Reader. There's a free one. I think I pay $2.99 a month. And when somebody gives me a business card, I take a picture of it with my phone and it throws it all into my contact list. But I only do that if it's somebody I'm really interested in knowing. I don't want to have all the stuff in my phone. But I also write notes about the person, like why I felt compelled to put their information in my phone. But part of the success of this is then you work that. When you, you carve out, maybe it's Tuesday, maybe it's Thursday, that you're going to talk to people all day and promote your business. And carve out a couple of hours, put it right in your schedule. And, you know, look at your list and know how to contact people. You, when you start adding people to your list, you want a physical address. You want their email. You want to know what's the best way you want to be contacted. Is it a cell phone? People will tell you. Do they prefer text? Do they prefer email? That should be a standard question when you're getting information. What's the best way you like to be contacted? Some people love to just talk on the phone. Some people want text. Some people want email. 
if you're old enough to remember, you might even remember faxing. Some people only want faxes. But get that physical address because there's a thing called thank you notes. And uh, people get way too much email and not enough fun mail. And if whenever we start live streaming the show or doing live TV, you'll be able to see. But right behind me to my right, I have, in fact, it's very organized today because my granddaughter, Drea, was here. And that's her job. Uh, I have all my envelopes. I have thank you notes, all different kinds. I have cards. I have postcards and stamps and all the things I need so I can send actual mail out to people. And I cannot tell you what happens when people, they go through and they get a bunch of junk mail and they get some bills and then they get this, what is this? And they open it and it's an actual thank you card expressing gratitude and appreciation. Sometimes I do fun things that way, but it's a way to rise above everybody else and stand out from the crowd. And that's what starts to put your brand your signature of excellence, that you're a person that really cares because you take the extra time to do stuff like that. And then people want to refer you. You can write things like, you know, um, if you know anybody uh, that is interested in, let's say if I'm an event planner, you know anybody planning an event, please let them know about me. Here's one of my business cards. And then just mark it off your list. You keep, you know, if you know how to do Excel, Make an Excel spreadsheet. That's the best way to do it, where you have the name, their occupation, how you know them, where you met them, their phone number, their email, and their address. And then I always have a place on the right-hand side where if I sent them something, if I sent them a sample of my product or a coupon or a promotion, I write the date I sent it, and then I have three places to follow up. And those things, that's hugely important. Because a lot of times people want to use your business or service, but they lose your card. They forget. People ugh, now more than ever are so distracted. So it takes more than it used to to get on people's radar and get their attention. But your list, especially in direct sales and network marketing, in the early days, I used to find people would make their list and they think that's just something they do at the beginning. Your list is an active list, and it's dynamic. It's always changing. So you should always have this. This is a habit. You know, I've been in business for 25, 30 years, and I always have a list to work off of. There's always new people to add, people to take off. But be continually building your contact list. And then there's resources you can use, MailChimp, AWeber, Constant Contact, Outlook, Facebook, all these different things. And we talked about some of that before. But that then once you have all this information, then when you have an open house, a party, a promotion, an event, a sale, then you've got some people, you've got somebody to market to. And that's, a, that's why big companies have sales and marketing departments, because that's a very big part of your business and your success. So I just want to share with everyone that it takes effort and it takes you know, organization, and it takes time, but it's worth it. These are the things that give you the freedom you want to live the life of your dreams so that you can be at those graduations. You can be in those hospital rooms. You can be the support for the person that has some bad luck, and you can generate the money that's much needed to travel and be with family and do things and really live the life you want. If you have a desire and You've got a space to work in your home office. Like I said, I'm more than willing to coach you and help you, give you ideas. You can find me at uh, JeanetteAvila.com is my website. There's a contact box there. Please go in there and send me a note. And if this show has helped you or you have ideas for a show of things you need answers with, I have a coaching program called Get Janine in Your Corner. If you go to my website, you'll see the Get Janine in Your Corner. You click that. I would love to give you a consultation and just talk to you and, and help you. And if you need a mentor, like I always had wonderful mentors. I use mentors all the time because sometimes a coach can see something in ourselves that we can't see. Um, and I've just been doing this for years. So I can shave a lot of time off the learning curve for you. And um, speaking of time, it's 7.59. I've hardly given Peter a chance to talk, but I think we have tuba <laughs> going on over there in the background. <laughs> so, Peter, I'll, I'll kick it over to you to close the show. I love listening to you on this stuff. So, 
we will close up the radio show by saying for those people listening in, you got to listen in again. And one of the things that I'll just underscore what Janine had mentioned is business or, you know, the, the stuff that's out there is a little bit like oxygen. It's, it's all over the place. You breathe it in every day. I mean, it, you just have to know what it looks like when you're doing it. So the key is, is if you're not an entrepreneur by nature, work with some entrepreneurs and they'll show you how to see the stuff that's just not there for normal people. So work with Janine Avila. So go to buildingfortuneradio.com forward slash Janine. Go to janineavila.com and then make sure you come back next week. Share the show with the people you like and we're going to give you some goodies and some tips for sure on Building Fortunes Radio. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Janine. You've been listening to Building Fortunes Radio on buildingfortunesradio.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for the designated Building Fortunes Radio segment with Peter Mingle. Be sure to check out the buildingfortunesradio.com website for our featured segments. It's been our privilege to have you listen in. At Building Fortunes Radio, we wish you the success you deserve and are willing to work for. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world.